once the thought that you're imaging becomes real, it produces a very, very strong chemical reaction in your body, and the body thinks it's in the experience. And it's that conditioning process, that emotional conditioning process, that begins to send new signals to the body and new signals to the genes and, and new information to the cells. And, and um, over time, I just made my way out of it. I was uh, back in my life, I think, in... Uh, maybe 11, 10, or 10 or 11 weeks, 10 and a half, 11 weeks, and back to, you know, doing everything I wanted to do at uh, 12 weeks. And, and so, the, I mean, and I'm not any, anybody special. I just, I just didn't have not, I, I just couldn't imagine living the rest of my life and with, with rods in my spine and being, you know, addicted to medications. And so I just made myself a deal. I just said, I'll fight. Well, if I was ever able to walk again, I'd, I'd spend the rest of my life studying this process. And, <clears throat> That's where I've been since then. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Do you think that you would be teaching and inspiring so many people if you hadn't had that accident? Probably not. Probably not. It's amazing. I well, would have been too uh, distracted. So it's so true. Let's let's talk a little bit about how people distract themselves from their emotions and from what's going on in their mind. So you mentioned before how we get on the Internet or we turn on the television. So when someone is thinking these negative thoughts and it starts to become their mood and, and become, starts to become their personality, and they go, some teachers of the law of attraction say that distracting yourself is an acceptable way to get out of that feeling that you're in. Mm -hmm. But I'm kind of thinking maybe when you're on the Internet or you're watching a movie, or distracting yourself in whatever way, eating food, whatever it is that you do, are those thought patterns and those emotions still kind of playing behind the scenes? Mm. That's a fabulous question, Maureen, and, 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 and I'm going to answer it um, without... Um, knowing what the people that teach the law of attraction actually mean by distracting sometimes it's good but i'm going to assume that when people have an emotion that they can't make go away if they eat or if they go to the movies or if they watch a video or if they um, get on the internet or they go on vacation or they buy the sports car or they buy the boat or they join the social club and meet new people that have the same problems and they're joining for the same reasons. All of that is to make a feeling go away. In other words, what most people do is they use the environment, they use something outside of them to make the feeling go away. And that's a natural tendency in most human beings. The problem is, is it's very Newtonian, it's very classical physics. In other words, if I take this pill or I drink this drink or if I shop and I spend this amount of money or if I buy this car, if I watch this video, that thing that's outside of me is going to change my internal chemical state, and it's going to make that feeling go away. And the moment that feeling goes away, I'm going to pay attention to what did it. And so the problem with that is, is that the next time the, cells, the receptor sites on the cells have to change, or the chemistry has to change, and they rely on shopping or gambling or video gaming or whatever, the next time they do it, they have to do it a little bit more. They have to shop a little bit more. They have to gamble a little bit more. They have to video game a little bit more. They have to do a little bit more to make the feeling go away because the receptor sites on the outside of the cells become desensitized. And we talked about this in the bleep. The cell regulates so that it needs more of a chemical hit to turn on. That sounds like an addiction to me. So it's not a bad thing. It's that just people think that they don't, they don't know that the change can actually come from within. And so the, the being distracted for a time being, I think, allows the person to, you know, unclutter themselves from the emotion. But that's just so that they can get clear on what they want. And that's what intention is, to get clear on what we want. And if we're running a real strong set of chemicals that, that are derived from those negative emotions that are coming from those survival centers in the brain and body that cause us to get angry or aggressive or hateful or judgmental or, or jealous or envious or afraid or, 
anxious or insecure, you know, suffering or depressed. Or those chemicals that are created from those survival emotions give us 90% of those negative behaviors. Now, the problem with those emotional chemicals is they have a very, very strong punch to them, and they give the body a rush of energy. And most people begin to become addicted or connected to that emotion that then formulates who they are. It reinforces them as a somebody. Now, the process of creation has nothing to do with being a somebody, but it has everything to do with being a nobody, which means when you're truly creating and you're truly um, paying attention to what you're creating, you forget about yourself. You forget about your body. You forget about your environment. You forget about time. And that creative process then, the side effect of that creative process, creates those emotions of joy or falling in love with what you're creating. And that is um, what we're after in the creative process. So if the person is struggling with an emotion and they can't find joy just in the creative process, they can visualize all they want. But if, the, if they can't let go of that emotional state, they're anchored to the past, and their, their, the results will be very minimal. So it is, it is really about going from survival to creation. And I always say we live in two states of mind. We either live in survival or we live in creation. And the hardest part about this whole process is actually sitting down and making the time to ask ourselves those questions. What do I want? What do I want to change about myself? If I live by this state of resentment for many hours in a day, I'm poisoning myself, and is this loving to me, and um, I can't blame my mother, I can't blame my father, I can't blame my past, because really now it's just up to me to change it, so, and the person, you could say to them, well, well, geez, you know, you had this event happen, well, if that event happened, and, and the person lives by the same emotion since that event for 20 or 30 years, they, they haven't evolved at all, they're, they're still emotionally at, at the same place they were when they were 15 or 20 years old. So do we go after the event and ask the person to make sense of the event? No. I mean, the event only will, according to the neuroscientific model and the biological model, recalling the event, nerve cells that fire together, wire together, reinforces the circuitry. And if we work ourselves up into emotional froth, we're reconditioning the body to memorize that emotion even further. So forget about the event. Just look at the emotion that you memorized that has become part of your personality and take that emotion now and begin to work with it and change it into something else. And when we're able to then do that properly, then the body begins to respond and the body begins to get healthy and then things start to shift in our life and we have movement and we start celebrating life like we're supposed to.